Imrahil, grey-eyed and dark-haired, 22nd prince of Dol Amroth, was a Dunadan from Gondor. In his veins ran the old blood still strong, mainly because his house had close ties to the elves of Edhelon. He had two elder sisters, Ivriniel and Finduilas, who wedded Denethor II, steward of Gondor. Therefore, Boromir and Faramir were Imrahil's nephews. Imrahil himself had four children, three sons, Elfir, Erkirion and Amrotos, and one daughter, Lotiriel, who married Eomer, the king of Rohan. For all of his life as a ruler of the princedom of Dol Amroth, Imrahil loyally supported the Stewart in Gondor in his wars against Mordor and Umbar. And so, when Denethor called for reinforcements for the defense of Minas Tirith, Imrahil came himself at the head of his company of Swan knights and 700 footmen, sending also a contingent to Pelargir to join the southern army of Gondor facing the Corsairs, probably under the leadership of his eldest son Elfia. Imrahil arrived at the guarded city on time to lead a sortie, riding out to help Faramir, who was leading the rearguard of the forces retreating from Osgiliath and the walls of Pelennor. The knights of Dol Amroth saved Faramir from Southrons, with Gandalf driving away the Nazgul, but not before Faramir suffered a poisonous wound. Imrahil himself took his nephew on his horse, bringing him to the houses of healing inside the besieged city. Then Imrahil had to take over the command of the garrison, because Denethor, in his madness, retreated to the citadel, planning his funeral instead of taking care of the defense. Imrahil wisely handed over the overall command to Gandalf, assisting him in his circuits around the walls, before taking command of the defense of the Great Gate. When Rohirrim arrived and attacked the army of Mordor, Imrahil again led a sortie out of the broken gate, linking his forces with Thoden. While Imrahil was paying respect to the fallen king of Rohan, he noticed that Eowyn was still alive and ordered her carriers to take her inside the city for healing. Soon after, he was again back in the midst of fighting, outnumbered and surrounded by the endless mass of orcs and evil men. Then Aragorn with the southern army of Gondor arrived, and the tide of the battle was turned. Imrahil recognized Aragorn as a rightful king, but agreed with the wise decision of Aragorn staying in his camp in front of the gates due to Denethor's temperament. When he learned of Denethor's death, he took command of the city, summoning Aragorn inside to heal Faramir, Eowyn and Merry the Hobbit. At the Council of Captains of the West, called to discuss the future actions, Imrahil agreed to follow Aragorn as his leech lord to the gates of Mordor, but took care that Minas Tirith, still under his command, was sufficiently manned. The remaining 7,000 strong army that should force the entrance into the Black Land and distract Sauron made Imrahil laugh, taking it for the greatest jest in all the history as this force was smaller than just the vanguard of the armies of Gondor in the days of its power. But the army set forth nevertheless. Under Minas Morgul, Prince Imrahil suggested the heralds to announce the coming of King Alessar, thus highlighting to Sauron that the heir of Isildur took over his inheritance. When Sauron's forces swarmed from the Black Gate, Prince Imrahil stood in the front line with his men, fighting under the One Ring destruction and the fall of the Dark Lord. Later, he was present at the celebration on the field of Cormalan, the coronation of King Elessar, and also joined the funeral process of King Theoden, staying in Rohan for some time, befriending Eomer and giving him his only daughter for a wife. During the reign of King Elessar, Imrahil remained the vital part of the Council of Gondor and one of King's chief commanders. After his death, his eldest son, Elfir, succeeded him, continuing the line of the princes of Dol Amroth.